Movement three. It's happening. <laughs> and I don't have facial hair anymore. So, movement three is my favorite movement of this whole suite. And it's my favorite movement for like three reasons, I guess. First reason is just that the, the general vibe is very mellow. And I just have a soft spot for mellow, beautiful music. And that's what this is. But I think there's two features of the music in particular that really interested me, especially the first time I saw it live. First of all, the beginning involves a duet between celeste and vibraphone. And it was just a, a sound that I had never really heard before. It just kind of blew me away. And then in the very next phrase, is the other feature that I quite like. It very prominently features the trombone glissando effect, which I love. It just gives a, a feeling of, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it gives the, it, this kind of wistful type of vibe to it, which is very fitting for the, the tone of the movement. I off camera typed in the duet between Celeste and Vibraphone. I haven't been doing this so far, but I'm gonna play for you what it sounds like. Hopefully I won't get in trouble for it. You can get the, the sense of what I'm talking about and why I'm so excited about hearing this piece live and in person and playing it. I'd been thinking originally that I would give myself the xylophone part, but I think I think I would play the Vibraphone part now that I really think about it, it's a lot more involved and it's the only mallet percussion instrument that does anything during this third movement. And I really want to participate in this third movement. So anyway, this is what the duet looks like. They're pretty far apart in the score, but this is the end of movement two. And then this 4-4 four, four time signature right there is where movement three starts. I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny bit. You'll see that the celeste down here plays one high note, two low notes, two high notes, two low notes, two kinda, kinda two high notes. It, it comes in pairs of notes. The high notes form a melody that has a rhythm of one and three and one and three. And then the notes in between just make chord tones. But the extra cool thing is that the vibraphone plays the exact same thing, but a quarter note later. There's a quarter note rest, but then the same one and three and one and three type of melody happens, but it's now shifted to be and two and four and two and four. It does two things. It makes it so that the accompaniment notes on the bottom just constantly oscillate. Whenever the celeste isn't playing accompaniment, vibraphone is. It it creates this like weird alternating blending tone that I, I love. And the other effect that it has is every time the celeste, which is gonna have a more prominent sound, every time the celeste plays its melody immediately after you just kind of hear it echoed in the vibraphone. It's very beautiful. So this is what the, the audio mock-up sounds like. Another thing about it that I like is that it makes it so that it takes a long time for the chords to change. Because when the celeste changes chords, it's done, it's it's on to a new chord, but the vibraphone still has one beat of that old chord left. So it kind of blends the bar lines, or blurs the bar lines, better way to put that. Blurs the bar lines together. Additionally, in real life, when we do perform this, the celeste and the vibraphone, they're going to have a little bit less attack and a lot more sustain. 
Like here it sounds like a music box, but when played in real life, it, it's going to have more of this wishy-washy ethereal effect. So super hyped for that. <laughs> then the next thing that happens is a short little duet between flute and guitar, which is also awesome. And when I say guitar, I mean electric guitar. Very atypical for wind ensemble and orchestra. There's also glissandi involved in this melody. There's a lot of like slides and there's a lot of glissando in this movement. And <laughs> the tragic thing <laughs> about this MIDI playback is that it can't do that. It can't do like microtones. So what it does instead is it just plays a chromatic scale evenly spaced out in between the two rhythms. I'll have to wait even longer to hear what this is actually supposed to sound like, but anyway. I've done the duet in the beginning between Celeste and Vibes. I've done the duet between flute and guitar. Now it's on to where the brass comes in, and I'm super, super excited about that. So, time to work. And there it is. After the flute melody finishes over there, it becomes these really, really slow half note chords. And it's it's half notes at 100, oh, nope. <laughs> it's half notes at 60 beats per minute, which is the same as whole notes at 120. Insanely slow. I'm finding that now that I'm looking at this score again, after I've been through college, as opposed to when I first looked at it in high school, I'm able to understand it a little bit better, which is cool. So I'm able to divide the ensemble into different voices based on the roles they're playing and what notes they're making. I can see the, the voice leading that he's going for, and I guess the general texture that he's going for. So I, I didn't really change much. In the first statement of the main melody, the chords are played by woodwinds in the original one and I think that lends it kind of a warm feeling. You'll notice the all the trumpet staves are empty, except for the trombones which play the melody. So I just gave the lower strings and the viola a similar role, and I'm hoping in an orchestra context it'll give the same warmth that I'm looking for. And then this is the glissando trombone melody that I was excited to type in and hear for the first time, which I did, and it sounds pretty good, except for the lack of glissando, but problems to be solved in person, I suppose. I did it. I finished movement three. I did it off camera because, geez. I don't remember what I showed you last time. I remember definitely pointing out this duet moment between the vibraphone and the celeste, which I love. There's also a duet between the electric guitar down here and the flute up here. That's super cool. And then we get into the kind of meat of the piece. There's five main sections. The first one and the last one are pretty much the same. And then the middle three are different than the first and last one. But the three of them are all pretty similar. Side note, I feel really bad for, I mean, anyone playing these half note chords, but especially the people playing the, the inner voices, which are going to be in this, in this A section, it's going to be clarinet two, uh, and tenor sax, and viola, but the viola stops right after this. It's just, it's mainly playing the same note over and over again <laughs> throughout the whole section. And as we get into this middle section here, the tenor saxophone in particular just keeps playing that exact same thing. Clarinet two keeps playing a pedal, but switches to a different note. Clarinet one starts doing the one of the inner voice pedals and switches from doing whatever they were doing before. 
I took out the viola because I wouldn't want to be one of those people that plays the same long, slow, one note thing three times in a row. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is what ends up happening to the tenor saxophone, which I ended up just copying. But the melody keeps being passed around through different instruments. It started out on the trombones, it eventually adds horns and alto saxophone. And then all the high voices play the melody the last time, meaning trumpets and high woodwinds like clarinets, oboe, flute, piccolo. And I also added the violins to that. I tried to be very careful and make sure that the the gliss would be comfortable for them. I hope that's I hope that's the case. And my favorite thing that I did, starting in this middle section, I have the cellos playing fifths against everyone else who's playing the, the bass voice. I did a little bit of editing of the timpani part down here because the composer had the timpani playing a low D flat, the, the D flat below the bass clef staff. I don't think the, the timpani functions as a bass instrument, and I don't even think the, the timpani has what we would think of as a bass range. They like to be in the middle of the staff, maybe towards the lower half of the staff, but definitely not too many ledger lines below. So I ended up moving <laughs> the main thing up an octave, but in moments where the bass line goes up really high, I put them in octaves. So it could still have that kind of low gut punch from the, the pitch F and higher. It's F, G flat, and A flat. The, the lower notes of the melody, the, the D flat and E flat in particular, would probably be too low. And I also gave tuning recommendations to the timpanist, which I hope is helpful. And I can do that because I studied percussion. <laughs> and then we have the vibraphone and celeste thing come back. We have the guitar duet with the flute come back and that phrase gets cut just a little bit short by this lovely tonic brass chord at the end. Home stretch. One movement left. These middle two movements have been pretty easy to do because they're slow, which means less notes taking up more time and less work for me to do, less notes to type in. But as we get to this last movement, the last movement is going to resemble the first movement a little bit more. It's very dense, very fast, a lot of fast runs. It's not that short either, so it's going to be a very difficult push to the end. But I, I believe in me. <laughs> Woo! See you next time.